down there, in that valley. I think that is where the tracks of that creature came from. Hey, I don't like this. The atmosphere is overwhelming. It's chilling. My... Keep it together, my friend. I'll not lose another to this foul power. I never felt it so strong. It's like a big time too. Whatever this power is, it wasn't bad in this world before. You sense it too? <laughs> Alien, yet familiar. You don't recall the ancient time of the dawning of creation? There's more to this than you realize. We need to get back to the others. I report all the best. But before I can't control it anymore. Do you have enough power left to open a portal? <laughs> I can't. Not here. Too much corruption. If we can get to the edge of the forest where the darkness subsides, we may have a better chance of... <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't quite make that last spit out. A better chance of what, exactly? Escaping? Oh, no. I'm afraid I can't just allow you to walk away from here. You see, if I was to do that, well, then you'd bring the rest of your allies here, and that... <laughs> would certainly compromise our little plan. Vipers, you have some nerve, traitor. Oh, temper, temper, little wolf. It's bad manners to shoot the only person keeping you from being shredded. Fix your heretic tongue, snake. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, it seems the Keeper of the Scales is somewhat unhinged. <laughs> Astraea, get back to the others. I'll hold them off you. I will not leave you to fight this scum alone. If you don't do as I say now, you do us all. Keep going! Now! Well, that was pointless. I had no real interest in the little wolf, but you, Kegdramas, the caper of balance, the jester, the bard, the punisher of evil deeds. You are of great value to me. <laughs> Take them to Fathora for binding, and then ready the artifact. Legends of Campion, the Genesis Era. A non-profit D&D fan-based audio drama. Written by Brad J. Taylor and D.T. Prater. Inspired by the unpublished works of Rochelle Hill. Chapter 4 Tides of Anguish <gasps> What the? Are you all right? You seem to be in shock. I I, 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 I think I just had a nightmare or something. I, I saw that thing again, but it, it looked right at me. I, I could feel its gaze pierce my very soul like... Like he was about to. Ah, I see. It's all right. No need to panic. It's merely a slight bleed. A, a what now? 
No, not that kind of bleed. Physically, you're absolutely fine. A bit fatigued, perhaps. I mean a bleed of realities. I've had my own share back when I was first getting used to my abilities. I tell you what, let's get some food. Nothing calms the nerves like a good hearty breakfast and a tall glass of mead. Good morning, master, and your sir. What I get you for breakfast today? Good morning, Harold. Two glasses of warmed mead, please. The usual for me and... What is it that you would like? <coughs> what? <coughs> uh, yes. Difficult tonight, sir? Yes. A little bit of a side effect from the time magic. Ah, I see. <coughs> what we get you for breakfast, young sir? Uh... <coughs> Do you have any salted meats or eggs? <laughs> Both. Uh, bacon and eggs? Absolutely, sir. I'll get straight to it. How are you holding up? <sighs> It'd be better if I hadn't had that nightmare. Did you say it was a bleed of realities? What's that? A bleed of realities is a byproduct of traversing time. It occurs when a practitioner is still trying to process the situation. And sometimes the mind can make it feel as though you're still seeing it with your waking eyes. And it seems so real that you even believe that you could reach out and grab it. Or, you know, it could grab you. <laughs> could that actually be physically harmful? No, not by itself, no. But the fatigue and trauma it causes have a significant detriment on your physical and psychological being. It's the reason why time shifting is only ever attempted by someone with a great deal of experience and constitution. There be anything else, sir? Not right now, thank you, Harold. I do hope you and the staff have gotten something for yourselves, hmm? Yes, sir. We are about to set off for our meeting with the Imperial House Keepers. May take a few hours. Of course. Take the day. As soon as we're finished here, we'll be heading to the temple. Will you be back before nightfall? Hmm. I believe so. I give instruction to whoever gets back first to light the lanterns. Thank you. Be safe, my friend. Enjoy your meeting. So these bleeds, how long does it normally take to recover from them? Well, that entirely depends on the constitution of the person. Sometimes it can take months. Sometimes mere hours. Thankfully, your master is also quite well versed in time magic. So I happen to know of a faster way to help you recover. To uh, do with the temple? Partially. At any rate, I have business with the temple. Organizing the consecration ceremony for the exhibition. In regards to that, uh, where were the rest of the Alvahirin? when Atreyu and Kegdramas were fighting that creature. Ah. Well, when Onbir learned what his first son had done, he immediately approached Chronotris and requested immediate action be taken to find him. Of course, Onbir knew that Atreyu had gone to find Vipus, but he was also aware that Vipus was extremely powerful, and even the knowledge that Kedromas was with his son did not bring the first wolf comfort. 
Why didn't someone intervene? Father, please. There was nothing we could do. He invoked the reed. Not even Chronotris can go against the law of the Creator. Also, how are we meant to intervene if we don't know what we're meant to be intervening with? The last has a point. Somebody should have told me sooner. <sighs> I imagine if Jarrett were able, they would have told us sooner. But even if that had happened, what makes you think we would have had the chance, nay, the rights, to stop him? The Hunter's Reed. The Hunter's Reed should not be taken in haste or acted upon recklessly. And what makes you so certain that Atreyu didn't act according to a plan? He was always one step ahead, always the careful planner. Why would he change his way now? First Wolf, I'm fairly certain that Atreyu knows what the risks are. He's never been one to act rashly. Little did the company know that whilst they were conversing, Atreyu had stepped out from a portal opened by Kadromus to give him an escape from Vipus. The issue was, the portal did not lead back to where it was meant to. And now Atreyu found himself in a strange place, surrounded by stars with the only sounds being his own footsteps. They echoed loudly at each step he took, and the sound of a deep and ground-shaking thrumming. A thrumming? Like a heartbeat. Was it his own heartbeat that was echoing? Incidentally, he thought that too, until he saw where the sound was coming from. If it wasn't his heart, whose heart was it? What was making the sound? Before him was what he could only later describe as an immense light that seemed to have no end. That sounds like when people have spoken of seeing the Creator. Was that what was happening to Atreyu? Indeed. And though this was a common occurrence for the Titans and the Elvahirin, it was still an overwhelming experience for the young hunter this was the first time he had ever been face to face with the Creator, having been born on the Ark World. Face to face with the Maker of Existence? <sighs> wow! <laughs> That's certainly one way to describe it. Atreyu must have had so many questions. I know I would. Indeed. And Alkai had been waiting to answer them for a long time. H hello This place, it feels familiar. Where am I? the center of all things, Yonatreyu. This is where everything begins, and where everything ends. You have questions? Be not afraid. I will tell you only truth. As you can imagine, Atreyu was overwhelmed, and indeed was brimming with questions. But when he finally found the strength to speak, he could only utter... A single sentence. I, I guess I just want to know why. He asked why? Why what? I don't understand. Even Atreyu couldn't explain the question he had asked when he told this tale. All he said was that it was the only question his whole being wanted to know. I just don't understand why all of this has happened. Why this war? Why this rebellion? Why have so many died in this pointless nonsense? Is it the same throughout the multiverse? I thought this world was meant to be different. How could you allow this? Why did you allow this? You could end it at any point. Why haven't you? <sighs> Forgive me, I just... I don't understand. I know you don't. And there is nothing to forgive. To question is to learn. At the beginning of all things, I was, and at the end of all things, I am. I had foreseen this time of upheaval 
long before I created the first star of the multiverse. I knew that one day I would be betrayed by one whom I once called my own. I knew that his ego and avarice would manifest to the detriment of all the worlds, and that this, in turn, would eventually seep into the consciousness of my titans, and even my angels. I knew that this war would happen the moment I envisioned the art world. Then why allow it all? You, you knew it would happen, yet you allowed it? Yes, because if I did not, I would become something I am not. A tyrant. I don't understand. Imagine, if you will, a choice between two paths. One is full of danger and trial, but at its end is an everlasting reward. The other is littered with golds, silvers, precious stones, kingdoms, all manner of riches. Yet at its end there is nothingness. Oblivion. I would want you to walk the path that had eternal reward. But if I offered you that choice, and then took it away, forcing you to follow the path that I wanted, would that not make me tyrannical? I allow these things to transpire, because these are the choices that have been made. But these choices are destroying everything. And what a Vipus. You know what he's doing. How can you allow that? Vipus has chosen to disregard every sacred law that I have passed. He has wholly given himself to the great enemy. He will be punished accordingly. Remember, Atreyu. Every action has its equal consequence, and for those who choose to place themselves on lofty thrones of power that serve only their avarice and do not respect me, there will be a great shattering as they are thrown from their towers. Then, what are my choices? The same as they have always been, young hunter. You may choose to become my instrument of justice, or you may choose to allow another to do so. He must be stopped, but... How can I become that which is required? Firstly, you must renounce your hunter's read, and instead make a new pledge, setting aside personal justice, and seeking the justice that I alone can offer. He never spoke about the rest of the conversation. He only ever said, I do what must be done. Did Atreyu agree to this? We can assume that he accepted because of what happened in the fables. You mean the never-ending war between him and Vipus that continued through their followers? In a fashion. So what was happening with the Alvaheran at this time? Anbir had pleaded with his allies to head to Galhart, a request they were happy to agree to. But with Chronotrus in a weakened state, they had to find a more conventional way to travel. Galhart lay across the sea, and as we know, there was a very... Difficult obstacle in their way. Maelstrom. Indeed. The tyrant of the waters themselves. But surely they wouldn't help the Alvaheran. They were a renegade, right? Most definitely. But above all else, Maelstrom was interested in their own survival. And if that meant working for both sides to save their own skin, they'd do it without a second thought. But they knew Thanor was with them. Wouldn't they try to avoid that? Normally, yes. But Maelstrom could be quite manipulative if they saw an opportunity. Personally, I think this is not the greatest of plans. We have to trust that this is the only option. Not only are two of our own somewhere on the distant shore, but we were tasked with rallying survivors. But to trust a renegade. Chrono Chess knows what he's doing. He sees things far more fastly than we do. Trust in the world of Alkai. Trust in Chrono Chess. It is not that we do not trust Jarrett, but there is a heavy darkness hanging over our destination. And trusting one renegade to help us against the rest is unsettling. 
How can we call ourselves Elvahiran if we shy away from our quarry? I would much rather swim than rely on a traitor. But if this is our creator's will, I will follow it without question. Who knew the only thing I want to follow is a lightning bolt through that snake's face? Wait, don't you mean into their face? No, I actually mean through, not into, through. Peace, Thonor. Remember that the will of the Creator is first, before any of us or our personal grievances, however wrong those grievances are. He has a point though, Lord Warden. Maelstrom wouldn't think twice about trying to kill any of us given the opportunity. They've proven so much when they killed Odinar. Yes, but we only have Inferno's word for that. And, well, look how much his word counts for. Regardless, nobody is asking us to trust Maelstrom, only to trust Chrono Chase and the world of Alkai. We do trust. It's just, with everything that's happened, we're just a little... Edgy. I understand everyone's hesitancy, but I've seen many different paths, and owing to my connection with our father being obscured, I do not have the power to get us where we need to go. So, this is the only option with the remotest chance of success. What are the chances of it being an unsuccessful outcome? Stand ready. Well, that's a comfort. You heard them! Be ready! I might get a wee bit choppy! Really? What? A water joke? I don't know what you're talking about. You've been spending way too much time around Kegdramas, brother. Maelstrom had better not test my patience. Maelstrom! In the name of Alkai, I command you to show yourself. Ye cowardly car! The audacity! None should disregard the name of the Creator lightly. Perhaps fear keeps them ignorant. Mm, more likely shame. Do not test me. I command you, show yourself. <laughs> it seems your power is somewhat lacking, Firstborn. What's wrong? Is your connection to the Creator a little obscured? How a boot I obscured your face with my hammer, your mock dwelling head attack! <laughs> Ooh, such a temper. You're sounding more like a renegade than a noble Alvahir. You dare to speak in such a way? Mark my words, you'll be laughing the other side of your face, you... Peace, Thonor. Remember, the will of Elkai supersedes your own anger. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord Warden. <laughs> Yes, the will of our creator. Which brings you here, I suppose. What is it you want, Firstborn? Two of our own are lost on the other shore, along with numerous scouts. Hmm. Oh, well. That is so unfortunate. And also none of my concern. There could be many dying. You are impeding us in our duty. We are trying to save the remaining Titans on this world. This is a sacred task. One that you are stopping us from accomplishing. <laughs> Did somebody forget that I was made a renegade? Had I been granted what I had earned, 
instead of being outcasted, maybe I'd have been convinced to help you. But, ah oh well, such a shame. Then I'll just go through you! Enough, all of you. <laughs> oh my, my. Do I sense a little dissension in the ever noble ranks of the creator's finest? <laughs> you wish, scum. You are a renegade because you broke the tenets of Al-Qaeda. First, by committing murder against your brother, Odinar. And then, by assisting the rebellion. You have nobody but yourself to blame for being exiled. The fact that you have not yet been eradicated should be favor enough. However, you still have an opportunity to do the right thing. And, maybe, gain redemption in the eyes of my father. If I were you, I would take the offer. But you're not me, are you? And there is only one thing I have any interest in. What would that be exactly? (sighs) Doubtless, they want some sort of amnesty from the Creator. Immunity from the judgment. (laughs) That just shows how little you know. No. Though being left alone in my domain would be nice. I want Infernos to be annihilated. For him to feel utterly powerless as I once did. Wait. Aren't you working with Infernos? It's what got you into this position in the first place. (sighs) I only worked with him because he made me. (laughs) I thought you'd have run out of pointless excuses by now. Doesn't matter who you try to use to hide your crimes. You're still going to face the consequences. No one is beyond the justice of the Creator. Mm. Either you grant me what I want, or you'll find it very hard to get anywhere beyond that shore upon which you stand. Our duty is beyond personal vendettas. To allow those vendettas to become a focus is to put ourselves above the Creator. Something that we will never do. (sighs) Fine. Then we have reached an impasse, it would seem. I have a counter-proposal. Well, well. If it isn't the Spy Master themselves, you took your time to appear from... Wherever it is you appear from. I've been here the whole time. Not that you could see me. I'm surprised you could see anything past that illustrious globe. You cool ahead. Or is that just your ego compensating for something smaller? Did it ever occur to you that my ego is not the problem? It's the fact that compared to me... You are insects. Know your place, sea snake. (laughs) Oh, but I am well aware of my place, firstborn. A shame you seem to have forgotten yours. See how you claim to be a big hero when, in actuality, you are only powerful because our beloved father's power. Take away that connection... And you have nothing of value. (laughs) Speaking of value... (gasps) What is that? This is a gift left to me by my father. A lovely little artifact known as the Crux Aquaticus, the heart of the seas. This little beauty is one of the pillars of creation and gives the wielder power over the seas and oceans, according to the will of Alkai. You see, when a titan is chosen to be a primal by the creator, they are gifted these pillars to shape worlds and control how elements work. How? You're not even a primal. That should be mine! You 
I'm not worthy of this, or any power. Now, about my counter-proposal. You will let us cross the sea, or I'll cry as my witness, I shall reduce you to nothing but vapor. Master, what are the pillars of creation exactly? When Alkai created the multiverse and every planet therein, he commanded his greatest angels to craft artifacts to carry his power to the Titans. Each primal of their respective elements was gifted these artifacts to carry out Alkai's specifications. The artifacts were named the Pillars of Creation the heart of the seas, the crucible of spirit, the horn of the air, the rod of Tyrannus, and the sword of fire. But Jared wasn't a primal, so how did they get such an item? At the start of the war, Odinar had been approached by Chronotris, who warned him of the impending treachery by Maelstrom. At first, Odomar was hesitant to believe it. After all, he loved his younger sibling dearly. But then he noticed a change in Maelstrom's demeanor. In the wake of the resistance by Infernos, Maelstrom had begun to suggest that Alkai was leading the Titans to their own destruction by ordaining that mortal races would, once again, be given a chance to become better by inheriting the Ark World that had just been completed. It was in this time when Odinar became fearful of what may happen if Maelstrom got their hands on the heart of the seas and gave the artifact to Chronotris to ensure it was returned to Alkai so that it may not be corrupted. But how did Jared end up with it? Chronotris knew there would come a time when the artifact would be needed. Alkai had already given him the foresight of this eventuality, and instructed Chronotris to give the heart to his most trusted ally, the youngest child of Odinar. But why Jared? Why not Thonor? From birth, Jared had been gifted great intelligence and cunning, whereas Thonor was more military-minded. Not only that, while Stonor had the powers of the air and the storms, Jared was more in line with the element of water. So it makes sense to give an artifact attuned to the power of water to one most capable of wielding it to its full effect. And if you didn't want your enemy to know about the whereabouts of such power, give it to someone who is capable of keeping it secret. Exactly. However, Jared had a burning desire for justice against Maelstrom as did Thonor, and standing there with the enemy at their mercy, it was almost too much to resist. Mercy, I I pray thee, I will do as you ask, please, no more. I wonder, did my father ask the same of you? And you did not spare him. So tell me why I should have speed along your judgment, heretic! Jared! That's enough! Yeah, I don't think it is enough. Jarrett, this isn't justice. Please stop. Jarrett, if you do this, you'll be just like them. This isn't the way. Their judgment is not yours to deliver. The way is open. We must find our allies. They are much more important. I know you have a deep hatred for the scum. I do too. But they're right, Jarrett. This... This isn't justice. This is just... vengeance. Mere moments ago, you yourself threatened to smash their face in with a hammer. Why is this so different? 
because of this and them. Not you. If you do this, it violates the tenets. You will become a renegade just like them. I know that isn't what you want. Their judgment will come. But not yet. My brother could be in great danger. Hegdemus too. Are their lives worth throwing away for this? Not here. Not yet. I know how much it hurts. But don't let them turn you from Alkai. They'll get there soon enough. You're right, Jerry. This act is beneath you. Let them face judgment in the right way. At the right time. According to Alkai's will. And no one else so safe. Yeah, that is just unrighteous. This is not over, heretic. I didn't realize how dark Jared could be. They weren't exactly dark. They were hurt. Angry. Desperate for justice. Even the most loyal of subjects can fall victim to despair. And through that questioning, anger, doubt, Jarrett was no different. Would they have gone all the way, you know, if they weren't stopped? Perhaps. It was certainly a very high possibility. Thankfully, Jarrett's faith pulled through. And soon enough, the Elver Huron were on their way across the land that had been revealed. One step closer to their quarry. <clears throat> feeling better? Uh, a little. Still feeling a bit fatigued, but I imagine some midday air will help. <laughs> you see? I told you. A hearty breakfast is just what one needs to get back on their feet. <laughs> and the warm meat helps, too. <laughs> well, up for a little excursion through the city. Got any of that meat for the road? <laughs> one of the fundamental rules of being a successful archivist. Always carry a healthy supply of strong liquor wherever you go. <laughs> you have been listening to Legends of Campion, the Genesis Era. A non-profit D&D fan-based audio drama written by Brad J. Taylor and D.T. Prater. Inspired by the unpublished works of Rochelle Hill. Featuring Thomas Avenger as the Old Archivus and Infernos. T.J. Crovo as Young Archivus and Vipus. Andrew Lovato as Chronotris and Anbeer. Melissa Kirsch as Atreya. Brad J. Taylor as Thonor and Fell Titan. Skaza Scarletti as Asirithon. Act Ash as Spymaster Jarrett and Cadromus. Ghost Waffles as Atreyu. Raven Anderson as Maelstrom and Elvahiran Hunter One. Frederick Verhagen as Harold the Goliath Butler and voice of Alki. Produced by Bumble Bear Creations. Directed by the Campion Audioverse. In association with Path of Dragons Radio, Casting Arrow Productions, and Dracon Rose Publications. Enjoying the story so far? 
why not leave us a rating on Spotify? Like and subscribe on YouTube. Or head over to Podchaser or Apple Podcasts and leave us a review. All links are in the description. <laughs>